So the tough thing is, there's not enough of us. I think that there should be more of us, and I think that's something the Air Force is working towards by um, putting physicians through the pilot training pipeline. You know, sometimes there's this um, interesting dynamics between pilots and their physicians, their flight surgeons. But when they see uh, pilot's wings on a flight surgeon, it, they, they just kind of know, like, I really can trust you. The idea is that we're able to kind of uh, meld the two disciplines in order to help the Air Force with unique knowledge of human factors, human performance. I worked on helmets for the Typhoon program, F-35, the early helmet mounted displays. We did some um, usability testing for the early F-35 helmets. A lot of full coverage GC protection, immersion suits. When I was doing uh, my TDYs through my residency course for two years, anywhere I went, I had my briefing and I had G-suits. I said, here's the G-suits, here's the briefing. I want to educate anybody I can. And for me, it was just, it was evidence-based medicine. You know, it was preventive medicine. You can do something that can mitigate a bad outcome. The earlier the better because um, it's much easier to fix a problem. The earlier in the life cycle development you can get it. And with any new airframe there are going to be issues. A good example was the F-22 had some, some concerns uh, with the uh, oxygen generating equipment. Jay Bones Flotman uh, was our F-22 pilot physician. He was there, he had the credibility with the air crews because he flew the F-22, but he had the knowledge that he needed as a physician in order to rapidly be able to rule out you know, things that it wasn't and um, it'd be a real aid in figuring out what it was. The general line we'll talk about is the reliability of the valve. It's almost kind of like you're bilingual. You know, you know the medicine, you know the physiology, you have the tie-ins to the Air Force Medical Service, but you've also been there as a pilot, as an operator, doing that mission. So it's almost like you don't need to interpret one or the other. You can kind of be a clear interface. Uh, we're looking at it now, EOD. Um, they have special demands and special needs. Remotely piloted aircraft, we talked about um, how they have needs that we're just now realizing. So any special operational duty could have a physician um, with experience in it, and that would be valuable. When you look at this career field, um, you know, it's a, a collection of um, people who've overcome the odds and invested amazing time and effort. And I think the Air Force recognizes it with um, the opportunity to use our, our skills, and so that's what I value.